Hi there, friends. I'll come in here with a quick note to let you know that the first global product owner summit organized by the Scrum Master Toolbox podcast is coming soon. To know more, check out the uh, bit.ly forward slash product owner 2023. That's bit.ly forward slash product owner 2023. That's all one word, all lowercase. And uh, stick around to the end of the episode to know more. But for now, on to the show. Hello, everybody. Welcome to our TGIF and product owner episode this week with Mina Venkatraman. Hey, Mina, welcome back. Hey, so, good to be back. Absolutely. And uh, it's great to have you back to talk about what might be potentially the most critical role in Scrum. Now, we're all Scrum Masters and we like to believe that the Scrum Master role is critical, which it is. But a great Scrum Master cannot do much if we don't have a great product owner to work with, right? Mm. That's why we talk very often here on the podcast about establishing this dynamic duo uh, mm -hmm. to be the Robin to the product owner's Batman, as it were. <laughs> we'll talk about a great product owner in a minute, but Mina, first walk us through what might have been potentially the worst product owner and the pattern you've ever worked with. I think uh, this was early in my uh, career as a scrum master and um, I, I've seen this in other places as well, you know, but the particular example is uh, often what happens when there's a transition is that uh, people are wearing a hat and then they forget that they have to take off that hat and wear a new hat. So this team that I was coaching, the product owner, actually transitioned from being a senior developer to becoming a product owner because he knew the product very well and he couldn't get let go of his senior leadership in the tech space because you know that was part of his identity as well so uh when i started coaching this team uh, some of the ways that this would manifest is that we would have these discussions and the product owner would slip into his old role, you know, like he would start by introducing what had to be done and would also solutionize like, hey, you know, I know this code, this is the complexity there, line something. If we change this, we can get to it. Here. Maybe so even telling them point. exactly what needs to be done, right? Exactly. Say so telling the team because he had that and it was quite intimidating for the team because he'd been around for a long time. And he had that influence. They weren't sure how to deal with the situation, right? Uh, so in this situation, the way I went about it was I gave the person feedback privately. You know, I spoke to them. Um, and he also had some strengths, right? He was very good at working with people. So appealing to that side of him, uh, I, I often feel that, you know, everybody's got that duality, you know, there's no good or bad. So appealing to that that side and really highlighting what the impact him behaving like this had, because the team would go quiet. They didn't have anything to contribute, given that he knew everything, right? Uh, and that was not that was not a good way to work for the team, because Sometimes they would get stuck and they would wait for this product owner to come back and sort of have the discussion to uh, sort of uh, help them move forward. Which To feel confident, right? Like uh, they confident. didn't want to make decisions on their own, right? Yeah, yeah. And there was this unhealthy dependency, right, between the team and the product owner, much more so than it should have been. Uh, these should be collaborative roles, synergistic roles, but this was getting to be... Uh, highly like you know they were they were uh, bleeding into each other these accountabilities were were not quite well defined so it went back to some of the basics you know coaching on rules coaching on what the team could do uh, giving the product owner feedback and he took it on board so credit to him uh, you know it's not easy taking on board feedback so yeah uh, this this was one of the hardest hardest things that I had to so do. So if you if you could turn back the clock and and go there and uh, again and and relive that story again, what what do you think would be something you would do differently at this time? Uh, I think I'm a much better coach now than I was. So you're speaking to a version of me recounting a version of an earlier version of me, right? <laughs> So uh, what, what I would say is that um, uh, 
uh, I would also coach the team better. Like I coach the product owner, but there's the other side, like the team was becoming very helpless, uh, willingly, you know, that was the other side that needed to be addressed. It happened, but I would get to that sooner if I had to do it, because there's always two sides to it. Product owner was behaving a certain way, but the team was also just letting him be that way, right? So I would I would coach both sides uh, equally. Uh, my focus at that that point in time was the product owner. I also worked with the product owner's manager so that you know we we supported him. Uh, but yeah, so that that would definitely be my approach because I think the team played a part in it as well. Absolutely. And working with the team and the product owner, because they are a system and we need to work with the whole system, not Perfect. just one side. That's a, a great tip. So, uh, Mina, that was a, an anti-pattern of a product owner. But of course, we also want to explore what might have been potentially the best product owner you've ever worked with. Describe them for us. Um. So I think the good and bad one is a slightly false dichotomy because this this product owner took on board the feedback and became a really good good product owner in the coming years. But there's if I had to think back of a really good product owner, I think there was uh, there there's a few different ones, but the the one that I have in mind, uh, he was also very good at doing product discovery. You know, so he ensured that what he was building. Uh, was what the customer wanted, uh, paired it with metrics, you know, like you, he would formulate hypothesis and I learned a lot from him. So now I'm able to take that knowledge and say, hey, you know, when you're building a product, how do you know that you're building the right thing? Uh, you know, I know we make a lot of, lot of uh, plans based on incomplete information. How are you validating this hypothesis? Uh, and going about it in that way, you know, and so then the feedback loops became really powerful and strong. Uh, so I I think that doing that product discovery piece and pairing it with your delivery uh, is a very important thing. Uh, some product owners don't have that skill. So I think, you know, it's a good thing to have in the toolbox. Absolutely. Box. And when you talk about discovery, uh, I imagine, so first you talked about, you know, having a theory of what works, then measuring it. But I imagine that he's also trying to figure out what should be the next uh, set of features, functionality, or problems to solve, and and was doing even I don't know like conversations or whatever before it even got to the team, right? Correct. So did did this person was did a bunch of customer interviews where they walked through the product and saw if it was being used in a certain way, and then learned a lot about the flow, you know, like. Uh, oh, we thought that this this feature would help with this, but it didn't quite. It actually confused the customer uh, and then came back and used that feedback in a way uh, to inform decisions on what new products to build. Um, and even after a product, even after a feature is built, how do you know that feature is actually working? You need to run some tests or you need to have some metrics. You need to measure certain behavior changes uh, to actually be sure that that's working. And the, the the PO I had in mind did all of those things really well. So yeah, I, I would say that's very powerful when done the right way. Absolutely. And uh, the the aspect of discovery allows the product owner to actually go to the team and say, hey, I don't know if this works, but if it works, here's what we should be looking at, right? And this okay. helps the team so much to come up with ideas on even what metrics to collect, because when when the software is running out there, we are not there, right? And the software can only collect so many metrics before it's too many. And okay. we need to be very clear about, okay, what are we looking for? What are the changes of behavior in the software that uh, or in the product okay. that we are looking for? And that collaboration is very important. Very important. And you, you highlight an important point there. It's not just the qualitative metrics and quantitative metrics. It's the qualitative insights that get generated from that, right? Like, how do you interpret these metrics? They're numbers. You can read them in any way. You could read them wrong. So, you know, you need to be sure that you're reading them the right way. You need to pair that up. So, yeah, it's... Yeah, and without the team explaining how the metrics are collected it might be very easy for the product owners to make incorrect assumptions about yeah. what the metrics mean in practice. Yeah, yeah, yeah. It's true. Very true. 
Absolutely. Uh, a great story of a great PO to finish the week, Mina. We're getting mm -hmm. close to the end, but before we go, do share with us, where can people find out more about you and the work that you're doing? Uh, the best place would be LinkedIn. Uh, I'm a social media recluse, <laughs> so, you know, you don't find me on Twitter, but uh, I, I am on LinkedIn. So the best way to connect with me would be there. Um, I do share uh bits about my upcoming talks when I do them and, you know, any other, any other good articles that I read or anything else, you know, my thoughts are usually there. So you can, you can, um, you can find me there. Absolutely. It's been a pleasure to have you here, Mina. So thank you very much for your generosity with your time and your knowledge. It's my pleasure to be here. Thanks so much for having me, Vasco. Hi there, Agile friends. Thank you for sticking around. This year's first global summit dedicated to the product owner role in Scrum will have some amazing keynotes and two tracks filled with first-hand stories and experiences for product owners to learn more about that critical Scrum role. We'll have Roman Pichler, author and product expert, who will be answering your questions and sharing the most important aspects of the product owner role. We'll also have Colleen Johnson talking about why roadmaps are probably making your life much harder than it needs to be and uh, what to do instead. This talk was quite a success in Agile Online Summit 2022 and Colleen has learned some new tricks, tools, techniques that she will share with us when it comes to roadmaps for the product on a roll. And we will also have Henrik Nibery, author of Scrum and Kanban from the Trenches, as well as one of the creators of the Spotify model. So come in and listen to his stories. And uh, we'll also have, of course, two tracks with uh, many more sessions and even some live sessions. The two tracks will cover practices every product owner should know, uh, where we'll be hosting conversations on topics that product owners need to be familiar with like product re backlog refinement planning and much more the second track will be on metrics measuring product and personal success as a product owner as product owners it's crucial to have a clear understanding of what are the metrics that drive success for us and of course also for the products and businesses that we work with and we need to continuously measure and optimize those metrics so in this track, we'll be sharing what's working and what's not in the area of managing success for product owners. We will also have the opportunity to network with our peers. It's a network event, of course. So get your tickets and join our Slack. Go to uh, bit.ly forward slash product owner 2023. That's all one word, all lowercase. As always, we will have free tickets and VIP tickets, which will give you long-term access to the content of this summit. So check them out at bit.ly forward slash product owner 2023, all lowercase, all one word. I'll see you on the summit floor. One more week of the Scrum Master Toolbox podcast is over, but there's a lot more we have to share. We have developed our own membership site where you find a community of active and engaged Scrum Masters. In this site, you get access to exclusive content and get to interact with us, your podcast host, as well as the best Scrum Masters in the world. So join us at scrummasterpodcast.com and keep this podcast free of advertising. See you next week for one more full week of Scrum Master tips and tricks.